Hello, my name is Nicholas Royal and I am going to read you a short story that I published in The Dummy, which is published by Swan River Press. Uh, Jane Ann Phillips was originally published in the London magazine. Uh, uh, strangely, they, they build it as a uh, piece of non-fiction um, rather than a short story. And that was weird for me because I've been trying all my writing life my so-called career to get published in the London magazine and uh, finally it happened and they said that uh, the story was well they didn't say the story is not a story but they published it as I say as non-fiction and this was in 2008 uh, but the weird thing is that in a way that's completely appropriate because it is a true story it's very short and it goes like this I'm in Amsterdam to promote my novel about doppelgangers. Checking into my hotel, I see Jane Ann Phillips, the American novelist and short story writer, standing at the far end of the counter. I recognise her immediately because I saw her only last weekend at the 90s Fictions Conference at the University of Sussex, where she said something about writing that I thought was interesting and wrote down in my notebook. The weird thing is, she's looking at me too also in apparent recognition. I say this is weird because in Brighton, Jane Ann Phillips was on the panel, appearing as an honoured guest, whereas I was a mere delegate. I sat near the back, didn't even raise my hand to ask, to ask a question. I can't believe I distinguished myself at all from those around me. Yet now we say hello, a little nervously, almost as if meeting an old friend with whom you are no longer sure of your standing then the clerk hands her her key and she makes to go. We say goodbye, myself, with the strange feeling that I may see her again. When I get up to my room, I throw open the windows, slightly disappointed that I have to crane my neck to see even part of a canal. But with that excitement peculiar to the guest who enters his hotel room for the first time, I realise I had merely gone straight to the nearest window, seeing none other. Taking a step back, I now see that there is another window, albeit curtained, in the adjacent wall. I sweep the curtain aside and open a magnificent double window onto Herrenkracht. Racht, the Dutch word for canal, is pronounced with a guttural H rather than a hard G. But I didn't know that on this, my first visit to Amsterdam. The telephone rings while I am unpacking my sponge bag and admiring my reflection in the bathroom mirror's flattering light. I walk back into the other room and answer the phone. It's me, an American voice, a woman's voice. Hi, I say, uncertain how better to respond. You want to meet up? Sure. Well, why not? Without once using my name, she suggests a time and a place and rings off. I enter a brown bar a little way down Herrenkracht and spot her sitting at a table by the full-length window. It looks as if she's having a drink with her twin sister. One of them sitting inside the bar, the other on the terrace overlooking the canal. Hi, she says, in a surprised kind of way, as if she'd been expecting somebody else. Can I get you a drink? They come and they serve you. Of course they do. I sit down. I loved black tickets, I say. They all started, of dream they all started as dreams, didn't they? I can't remember if they started as dreams and became real or the other way around. She can't settle and is checking out everyone who enters the bar. Are you waiting for somebody, I say. As a matter of fact, she says, looking at me, I was expecting somebody else. I was expecting Nicholas Royal, the author of telepathy and literature and books on Derrida. He teaches at Sussex, where the 90s fictions conference took place. Well, actually, I say, he doesn't teach there yet. He's still at Stirling. We sit there for an hour, drinking, looking around at the other people in the bar, not talking much, although I remind her of the things she said at Sussex that I had found interesting enough to write down. You said that writing is a kind of asbestos suit, I say. She responds only with a weak smile. We're all sitting there, late into the evening, and through the night. The following morning, we still have not moved. Around about the end of the third day, 
she has begun to shade into transparency and by sunrise on day four she has completely faded away. I remain sitting at the table for another hour before rising slowly to my feet and leaving the bar. Thank you very much.